Here's a clip from part of a conference that Jordan Peterson spoke at on February 25th. He first discusses the importance of free speech and telling the truth, then takes a question from the audience about Milo Yiannopoulos. Milo's recent loss of his book deal, job at Breitbart, and the huge criticism he faced after crossing the line with his commentary doesn't change the role that he had in political discourse, and Jordan describes the archetype he was and also why he was so well known. Don't underestimate the power of your speech. Now, you know, Western culture is foul logo centric. Let's say it. Okay, so we'll say, yeah, that's just fine. That's exactly what it is. It's predicated on the idea of the logos. That the logos is the sacred element of Western culture. And what does that mean? It means that your capacity for speech is divine. It's the thing that generates order from chaos and then sometimes turns pathological order into chaos when it has to. Don't underestimate the power of truth. There's nothing more powerful than truth. Now, in order to speak what you might regard as the truth, you have to let go of the outcome. You have to think, all right, I'm going to say what I think, stupid as I am, biased as I am, ignorant as I am. I'm going to state what I think as clearly as I can, and I'm going to live with the consequences no matter what they are. Now, the reason you think that, that's an element of faith. The idea is that nothing brings a better world into being than the stated truth. Now, you might have to pay a price for that, but that's fine. You're going to pay a price for every bloody thing you do and everything you don't do. You don't get to choose to not pay a price. You get to choose which poison you're going to take. That's it. So if you're going to stand up for something, stand up for your truth. It'll, it'll shape you because people will respond and object and tell you why you're a fool and a biased moron and why you're ignorant. And then if you listen to them, you'll be just that less, much less like that the next time you say something. If you do that for five years, you'll be so damn tough and articulate and able to communicate and withstand pressure that you won't even recognize yourself. And then you'll be a force to contend with. And you don't get to wait until, because I get letters like Gad uh, gets all the time too from faculty members in particular. They say, well, you know, when I get tenure, then they think, well, when I'm an associate professor, and then they think, well, when I'm a full professor, it's like, if you're a professor already, you're like the most protected person in the history of the planet, you know, and, and you, you, you need, well, hey, what, one of the things that that indicates is that it's almost impossible to provide people with enough protection so that they feel safe to speak. Okay, so we'll address that directly. It is not safe to speak, and it never will be, but the, the thing you've got to keep in mind is that it's even less safe not to speak, right? It's a balance of risks. It's like you want to you pay the price for being who you are and stating your mode of being in the world, or do you want to pay the price for being a bloody serf, a one that's enslaved him or herself? Well, that's a major price, man. That thing unfolds over decades, and you'll just be a miserable worm at the end of about 20 years of that, right? No self-respect, no power, no ability to voice your opinions, nothing left but resentment because everyone's against you, because of course you've never stood, stood up for yourself. It's like, say what you think carefully, pay attention to your words. The price is, it's a price you want to pay if you are willing to believe that truth is the cornerstone of society. And in the most real sense, if, you, if, you, if you're willing to take that leap, then tell the truth and see what happens. And nothing better could possibly happen to you. There'll be ups and downs, and there'll be pushback, and there'll be controversy and all of that, but it doesn't matter. The truth is what makes the world, the truth is what redeems the world from hell, and that's the truth. And we saw plenty of hell over the last hundred years, you know, and we haven't learned a bloody thing from it. It's like, wake up, tell the truth, tell the truth, or at least don't lie. And that's a start. And, and you've you got to understand that's a risk. But I will, I, I have one more brief thing to say about that. Um, so, you know, I said what I had to say back in September, and uh, I, I'm sure that I could have done it better, and many people have told me how I could have done it better, although it didn't mean they would actually do it. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> and, you know, my job was at risk, serious risk, for about two months, and it destabilized my family. To be very brave about this, so, like, thumbs up to them, man. They, they just stood up. <laughs> 
Sicily has left me alone completely. I shook hands with the dean two weeks ago. We're on friendly terms. They don't want this to go any farther than it has already. The students were tremendously welcoming when I came back to teach in January. I haven't had a single negative incident at the university. And I've received thousands of letters from people all over the world, all of which have been in support. I've received two negative letters. That's it. Two. So the, the, the people, people have an inchoate longing to have the sort of thing that we're talking about articulated. And so don't be thinking you're alone. It's just that people can't talk, they're afraid to talk, or they don't know what to say. And, and those are real problems. So if you're reasonably articulate, like start talking and sharpen yourself up. I mean, the enemy is, is a cloud. They're a cloud of gnats. They're only courageous in groups. They're only courageous in mobs. If you stand your ground and don't apologize and articulate things properly, they'll disperse around you like they're not even there. So most of it's illusion. So don't be, be afraid, but be afraid of the right thing. And the right thing you should be afraid of is not saying what you say, because that's the same as not being. And here you are suffering away. You might as well be at the same time. At least then there's something to you. So. is what role do provocateurs play in the debate over free speech? So uh, the example of the day is, is obviously my own Minneapolis. Um, are these champions of free speech? Or do they undermine public support for the right? Or are they simply self-interested people who are hijacking a right in order to promote <laughs> themselves and their own interests? Um, and obviously, is this a new phenomenon, or is it something that is, is, is age-old? They're all sorts. Milo's a classic example. He's an amazing person. I mean, he's he's a contradiction. He's a walking contradiction. You can't pin that guy down. Like, like what is he? Half Jewish, half English, gay, uh, provocateur, Catholic. Who's a, who's who's really who's yeah? Who loves black guys? And who, who who is it? Who appeals to American Republicans? It's like. What are you going to say about something, somebody like that? It's like he's a he's a he's a trickster figure, archetypally speaking, you know. And he's he's a provocateur and a comedian. And the funny thing about comedians, they're like jesters in the king's court. The jester was the only person who could tell the truth because he was beneath contempt. And that's the role that comedians and provocateurs play. They're poking, they're poking, and laughing, and making fun. And you know, Milo Christ even dresses like a. Uh, what do you call those? Harlequin. You know, he's a trickster, and trickster figures emerge in times of crisis, and they point out what no one wants to see, and they say things that no one will say, and you can say all the terrible things about him. He is a provocateur. He's an egomaniac. He's a, he, I don't think he's narcissistic, but uh, because he has some real capacity for self-reflection, but um, and he's brave as can be. I mean. And, and he's unstoppable on his feet. He just amazes me. I've never seen anyone ever, I don't think, and I've met some pretty damn smart people, I've never seen anyone who can take on an onslaught of criticism and reverse it like he can. If you like the video, smash that like button. If you don't like it, leave a comment explaining why. If you have nothing to add, zero, zero fucks, fucks given. given.